Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So today I want to talk about adaptive sync monitor technology. And the reason for that is, is I got my hands on a G-Sync and a FreeSync monitor here recently, and I've never used the technology before. So I was kind of going into it with some high expectations because the reviews for the technologies have been very good across the board. But honestly, I got more out of it than I was expecting. I was completely blown away by the performance that you're able to achieve using even low-end hardware. So that's something we're going to explore in this video. And what does this mean for the industry? You know, in previous videos, we're talking about how GPU manufacturers really aren't targeting, you know, gaming as a primary focus anymore. And with CPU architectures and game engines being so outdated or not really being tailored towards gaming, once again, you can go ahead and check out that video. Where does adaptive sync technology fit into all of this? And in all honesty, the answer to that is I think it's really the answer. Now, we're going to go over that here in a sec, but first we're going to go over a couple of details about adaptive sync technology. If you're not familiar, I'm not going to go into all of the details, just kind of some of the stuff that maybe you don't already know. All right, guys, I'm not going to go over all the basics. If you want the complete overview, Hardware Unbox had an excellent video not too long ago where they go over most of the information that you need right here in this FreeSync versus G-Sync in 2017 video. I recommend you go ahead and check that out. I'll put the link in the description below. But there are a few key points that I want to make sure that everybody is aware of. Now, one of the big ones is the low frame rate compensation, or LFC. What this does is a lot like V-Sync, once games start dipping around or below 30 frames per second, what the monitor will do will start doubling frames and it enhances smoothness. So basically, it'll look a lot smoother than what's actually being produced. A good way to go ahead and kind of think of it is, remember the interpolation that TVs would do to kind of make video look like they ran at 60 FPS or 120 FPS? That's kind of similar to this particular piece of technology. And if you have a quick and short spike underneath 30 frames per second, somewhere around 20, 25 frames, it'll help smooth out the gameplay experience. And in all honesty, it works very well for what it does. Another difference between FreeSync and G-Sync is the available inputs. FreeSync's available on DisplayPort and HDMI, which is really nice. And the FreeSync monitors are not limited in the, their port selection. G-Sync monitors are limited to a single HDMI port and a display port. This is a limitation that FreeSync does not have. However, as we're going to find out that the NVIDIA standards for G-Sync are the same across the board, whereas FreeSync varies wildly, and that's really where something like LFC, the low frame rate compensation, is noticed. If we go ahead and check out the monitors over here, you'll see that they have a specific section that says whether or not LFC is supported by specific monitors. And this is part of the reason why FreeSync is kind of a weird solution. See right here, we have 35 to 144 hertz, then you have 48 to 75 hertz. Uh, let's see, what else do we have on here? We have 40 to 60, 40 to 75, 48 again. Um, there's a couple of them that start at 50. Basically, there's no set standard on where FreeSync goes. It's up to each individual manufacturer of monitors to pick and choose what it is that they choose to support. Now, generally on the top end, that's the maximum refresh of the monitor, but at the bottom side, I don't really know how that is determined. It may just be determined by the panel. 48 frames per second or 48 hertz, that's actually a bit high. And if you don't, let's see this one does, but this one doesn't. This does not have the low frame rate compensation. That means if your game does dip below 48 frames per second, you will see stuttering unless you enable V-Sync, which isn't too bad of an option if your game very rarely goes below 48 frames per second. But if it happens on the regular, that is not a very good solution right there. And interestingly enough, generally the LFC is only available on the higher end, more expensive panels. This really negates that whole $200 price premium for NVIDIA G-Sync to a degree because the more budget-friendly options do not support the feature that a budget-friendly build will probably need. So it's kind of counterproductive there. It's also kind of annoying that you have to go to AMD's website to check to see what the frequency range is. This is not mentioned by the manufacturers. You don't see these numbers on Newegg when you're trying to buy a monitor. You have to actually go and do the homework yourself. 
So the big difference I want to hammer home here is the fact that FreeSync has no set standard. It does the same thing, but there's no set standards. For example, you know, 48 to 75 hertz, you're good. And if you dip below that, you're kind of screwed. Now on this one, you have 35 to 75 hertz, which is fine. And if you do dip below, that's fine. The LFC, low frame rate compensation, will kick in. But you're looking at a 3440 by 1440 ultra wide IPS. This is not a budget friendly monitor. This isn't gonna be $100, $150. This is a much more expensive panel. And when you scroll through and see which ones support LFC, you're gonna notice that that's generally the case or they're really high refresh monitors anyway. Now on the Nvidia side of things, it's a little bit more simplistic. It's pretty much you buy something that's got G-Sync and you know exactly what it's going to do. All G-Sync monitors offer LFC. That's just a basic feature of them. They all have a range of 30 hertz up to the maximum of the monitor. So if it's 144 hertz, it's 30 to 144. If it's 60, it's 30 to 60. So it's a very easy standard to get behind. And that's part of the reason why they charge a premium. Not only the fact that it's Nvidia and they always charge a premium, but because it's a much more simple ecosystem. As a consumer, you don't have to go out, you don't have to do all the homework yourself. So that's actually really nice from a consumer perspective because you know you're gonna get the same level of technology no matter which G-Sync panel that you get. Whereas with FreeSync, you need to know exactly what it is that that particular monitor will do for you. Okay, so now that we have an understanding of the technology and the differences between FreeSync and G-Sync, I went ahead and tested the G-Sync monitor because I have access to more NVIDIA GPUs right now, mostly due to mining. Once the mining craze is over and we can go ahead and get secondhand GPUs at a reasonable price, I'll go ahead and pick more up. However, I just want to touch briefly on my FreeSync experience. It was very good. Uh, the panel that I had goes from 40 hertz all the way up to 75 hertz, so that's its free sync range. It does not have LFC, and I put uh, V-Sync on, so if I dipped below the 40 frames per second, it just V-Synced it, and I had a great experience with that. The monitor was only $150, so that was much, much less expensive than the G-Sync monitor that I have. Now, that being said... There were some pretty good deals. I got the G-Sync monitor for $4.99 with a $100 gift card and a $75 rebate. So at $325 for a 27 inch 1440p monitor at 144 hertz, that's really not so bad either. So there are some pretty decent deals out there, but G-Sync will cost you a little bit more. However, you do get the LFC and all the other high-end technologies. So there you go. Well, alrighty guys, the test that I did for you here today, and silly me, I forgot that the camera only records at 30 frames per second, so the little window, that's the screen, you're actually watching the screen with the camera that I have, it doesn't look as fluid because it's only at 30 hertz, so I do apologize for that, but I went ahead and tested the GTX 1050 Ti at 1440p Ultra, and yeah, I know, that's kind of crazy, I know what you're thinking. However, I used uh, Modern Warfare Remastered because that's a game where you can really feel the difference in control once frame rate starts getting a little bit low. So I wanted to use that as a kind of a baseline because that's really where you're going to see the difference. The video quality, because of the smoothness that G-Sync or FreeSync implements into the game, it pretty much looks the same. It looks a little bit smoother. You can tell the difference between a higher-end video card and the GTX 1050 Ti, but only a very little bit. But the big difference is you can feel it because there's a lower frame rate, you have higher input latency, and that is something that I do go over here. So let's go ahead and see the comparison between the 1050 Ti at 1440p and the GTX 1060. All right, so as you guys can see, we're just using a standard GTX 1050 Ti, no overclocks, no nothing. So we're going to go ahead and see how this does with some gaming. Okay, so for demonstration, I'm going to use Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. So let's go ahead and check out these graphic options. Okay, so 144 hertz, 1440p. And we're pretty much maxing out the settings here. Okay, remember, this is on a 1050 Ti graphics card. All right, so the reason why I went ahead and chose Modern Warfare is because it is very touch sensitive. You know, you'll be able to feel it if it, the game doesn't feel right. You'll feel it in the controls. 
But thus far, this game feels silky smooth. I'm not even looking at the frame per second counter because, well, honestly, the direction that I have the monitor, I really can't see it from here. But the game itself is very responsive and feels fluid. You guys are actually seeing what frame per section I'm playing at. Now, it does feel a little sluggish, but the image quality is insanely smooth. As you guys can see right here, it feels a little bit more responsive, but that's because I guarantee you there's higher frame rate because I'm not looking at anything. But honestly, the main difference between in there and out here is the controls are just a little bit more fluid. As far as the gameplay goes, there's really no difference. Okay, so this is a larger open area, and I'm going to be doing some sniping here. And this just feels good. I mean, I know the frame rate can't be that good. It's a little tough for me to see at this angle. But I don't feel any jitteriness or just lack of input because of V-Sync or anything like that. The gameplay feels like how it should if V-Sync were totally off, but the frame rate and the image quality looks much better because this would be a stuttery mess if I was using uh, or just running without any sort of G-Sync or V-Sync or anything like that. Yeah, please excuse my poor shooting because, like I said, I am kind of playing at a weird angle so you guys can view with me. So, alrighty, guys, this is the first test that I did with the 1050 Ti, and I've run other games, but this one to me is one of the more impressive ones because of how the input latency in a game like this is so important. So let's go ahead and check out how the 1060 does and see how good of a gaming experience we can get out of that. So as you guys can see, we're using a GTX 1060 six gigabyte. There's no overclock in place, it's just all stock. Let's go ahead and see how this bad boy performs. Alrighty guys, nothing's changed. We're just gonna check the graphics. Let's see, so same. And all the settings remain the same. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this feels at 1440p maxed out. All right, so this feels a little bit smoother. Image quality doesn't look any different as far as the video goes but it does feel a little bit better on the controls. It does feel smoother. In all honesty, this actually feels perfectly fine. I have no idea what the frame rate actually is, but there's no reason to think that this isn't a perfectly playable experience. Do that same test. See now here, this doesn't feel any different because the frame rate is higher to begin with. But in all honesty, like I said, visually, it doesn't look any different, any better. It just feels a little bit better on the mouse, a little bit smoother. Yeah, I feel no slowdown here. This feels perfectly smooth. Looking at the frame rate, I did cheat a little bit on this one. It's actually maintaining high enough to where it's not really an issue. But I guarantee you that at some points there were dips below 60 frames per second, and I didn't feel a single one of them. Well, alrighty guys, there you have it. The 1050 Ti was able to handle Modern Warfare Remastered. This is a game that came out just last year. Of course, it's an updated version of an older game, but even still, I've tried it in other games such as Gears of War Ultimate, which is also an updated version of an older game, but games like Witcher 3, Batman Arkham Knight, and several other newer titles, Doom, and it ran just fine. Now, sometimes, like I said, the controls would feel a little heavy, but other than that, the actual gaming experience was very good. It was very positive. The frame rates were able to stay well above the 30 frames per second, which delivered a rather smooth gameplay experience. Now, because it is a weaker GPU, it wasn't jumping all the way up to like 100 hertz and then dipping down to like 30. So it wasn't jarring either. After you got kind of used to it, it just played just fine. Now, of course, the GTX 1060 being a much more powerful card, that delivered a smoother experience, mostly just by touch. You know, the controls were a lot snappier, and it was a better overall experience. So nothing's going to beat actually pushing higher frame rate. But the point of this is, is let's say most of the games that you play aren't super demanding, or you mostly play older titles. What I'm telling you guys here, and this is why this is so important, you don't have to buy stupid expensive graphics cards. 
you can get something that's $200 like a GTX 1060 or even $140 like a GTX 1050 Ti. On the AMD side, once they're back in stock and at MSRP, the RX 580 or 570 would be a great solution with a FreeSync monitor. And you don't even have to spend quite as much on the monitor. Now, if it doesn't perform well and you're trying to push 1440p into those low ranges, you might want to invest a little bit more on a monitor that does have LFC. So this way, if it does dip below, you know, you get that extra performance and you, your controls don't suddenly get heavy because you have to use FreeSync. But this is awesome news. At the end of the day, you don't have to invest near as much money in a GPU that you used to. In fact, I would recommend buying a adaptive sync monitor over a higher end GPU. I'm telling you right now, if you're looking at a GTX 1080 Ti and you do not have a G-Sync monitor, you're doing it backwards. Get yourself like a 1060 or 1070 and get yourself a G-Sync monitor. On the AMD side, if you're looking at a Vega 64 and you don't have a FreeSync monitor, either get a Vega 56 or wait for the RX 580s to come back in stock. Get yourself a decent FreeSync monitor first. The reason for this is as time goes on and those graphics cards do get weaker, it doesn't matter. Your frame rates will go down and your performance will go down in newer titles, but you won't really care because the performance will still be good enough. See, before I had an adaptive sync monitor, I could never go below 60 frames per second, ever. Not even one frame out of millions. It would bother me and I would upgrade my computer pretty much immediately. And that's a lot of wasted money right there because as long as you're within 50 to 75, you're not even gonna tell the difference. And if you're mostly between 50 and 75, meaning if you do dip down into the 40s every once in a while, let's say 0.1 or 1% lows, that doesn't really matter anymore. You can just ignore 1% lows. Basically, all you have to look at is the average frame per second. So if you're looking at a GPU, a new GPU that comes out, and let's say it runs the game that you want at 4K or 1440p, and it's only averaging 50 to 60 frames per second, okay, well, with an adaptive sync display, that's just fine. You know the performance is gonna be more than adequate for your personal needs. Now, if you don't have an adaptive sync display, you're going to need to run over 60 frames per second because then you can either hit V-Sync or you have to run near 100 frames per second, which I tested with my 144 hertz Asus monitor that I used to have. At 100 frames per second, it kind of doesn't matter. The games will look great and you don't see the stuttering or screen tearing or any of that. So it's either you have to overpower your games massively and invest a crap ton of money for performance that in all honesty, you don't need when you can just simply invest a little bit more into a monitor. Now let's be realistic here. How often do you upgrade your monitor? Pretty much until it dies, right? I mean, most people do. It's until the thing dies or newer, much better monitors come out and they're a lot cheaper. So like when 4K 144 hertz monitors are two or 300 bucks, you'll say screw 1080p or 1440p and you'll probably upgrade, right? How often do you upgrade your graphics card? Every generation or two. That's, that's pretty common. So which one's gonna stick around longer? Which one sounds like the better investment? Spend an extra 100, 200 bucks on a monitor or spend an extra 100, 200 bucks on a GPU? It's really up to you, but in all honesty, this is my opinion. This is a major game changer and I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody quite stress it this hard because the first time that I threw in a GTX 1050 Ti, started running all kinds of games that it has no business playing at 1440p ultra settings Far Cry 4, that was another one that really kind of blew my mind. That, that, like I said, is totally insane, but it worked, and it worked well, and the games were more than playable. They were an enjoyable experience, and honestly, I would probably still recommend going with the 1060. I'm not telling you to buy 1050 Ti's. In all honesty, though, the GTX 1060 uh, totally demolishes 1440p. This is heralded as generally a uh, 1080p level graphics card, but with adaptive sync, it handles 1440p great. So there's simply no reason in investing into higher end graphics cards if all you're gonna be doing is 1440p. Well, alrighty guys, if you found this useful, please hit that like button, please subscribe, please share with friends, that really helps us out. And try to get the word out on this one. This is really important stuff. A lot of people are overspending on hardware because they don't have the right monitor technology. 
Uh, hopefully this can save people a lot of money. That's really the point of this particular video. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you guys really want to help support us, please check us out on Patreon. With your guys' support, this helps us get this tech on hand. We can get more tech on hand. And this way we can deliver higher quality content for you. And I really appreciate everybody that's already supporting us. You guys are the best. And I will catch you guys in the next video.